All right, what's up, everybody? It's the Lando Show here, checking in with you guys, the Fish Nation. Had some interesting information come across my timeline today on Twitter. Uh, at least, if if not noteworthy, at the very least, it's discussion worthy, uh, or at least acknowledging. So we'll go ahead and just jump right into a real brief topic of discussion today. This comes from Burgers and Blitzes at Not to Be Trite on Twitter. It says, and you got to remember, this is a source or an, an anonymous source. So be careful what you put your stock into, right? Especially if that stock doesn't have a symbol or a, a, a title or a name, right? So we, we don't have a, a source here as far as I can tell, but just wanted to read this and, and uh, have this discussion with you guys. I have some info on a few things that caused the offensive problems, but don't want to put it out there. So here's my receipt. That calf was worse than what it got out. Nothing torn, but it's why he wasn't running until the last two weeks. I think we all kind of understood that. It's very obvious or evident. At some point, uh, at the very least, he was hampered by it. Okay, that was that's that's been duly noted and very very evident for all of us fans. Next, the next part of this is Stephen got pissed at Kellen for trying trick plays early on in the season and uh, those blowouts. So that's kind of interesting. I can see where you know if you're trying to protect yourself long term, maybe you don't want to let all these you know these cats out of the bag per se when it's not necessary to use them. Kellen Moore is a young, up-and-coming offensive coordinator who's clearly going through his fair share of growing pains right now, too. So that, you know, kind of is what it is. But next paragraph says, Once Collins got back and they let McCarthy have his dog and pony show of punishment, he was forced back into the lineup via up top. So they're saying, like, the Joneses forced Lyle Collins back into the lineup there because of the money that he's being paid as compared to Terrence Steele the undrafted free agent. Uh, money gets on the field. They also get to play. Cowboys football, in quotation marks. And their eyes with him in the lineup. So they also get to play Cowboys football in their eyes with him in the lineup. They There went your misdirection, pin and pull, etc. So to me, that's whoever this source is, anonymous source, hinting that the Joneses didn't like all the crazy misdirection, pin and pull stuff. Now, whether or not those two are directly affecting the offensive uh, game plan and the, the, the schematical, tactical elements that you're trying to deploy week to week. Again, that's why we're having this discussion right here. You guys tell me. You be the judge. Uh, there went your misdirection, pin and pull, etc. That's that's something that I have actually talked boldly about, uh, b being the, the element that was missing from this game. When I when I take, you know, my uneducated, untrained, self-taught eye of 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 football and look at the all 22 I don't see those elements they were gone they clearly were missing for the last two and a half three months of the season and that that's why our run game suffered as a result of it because there was no misdirection element no eye candy uh, for the defense and teams as we all know began allocating two safeties uh, two high safety looks and, and devoting more guys to coverage and defending the pass. And we had no answer for it, even against light boxes running the football. So big, big problem, big red flag there. Ties back into Steven getting pissed at Kellen for showing too much. So maybe they were just trying to hold back. Maybe that, maybe the reports of them sandbagging were true. I still don't buy it, but this source would indicate otherwise here. Next thing we got is... Amari's VAC status was, is, and will be a problem. No other way around it. Then his half-assed play on the ones where he's not the primary made things that much worse. So again, that's another thing. It's uh, kind of, it, it is what it is. People who, people have their stance on, on the vaccine, on, on COVID as a whole, uh, and they're going to do what's ultimately, what they feel to be in the best interest of themselves, right? And so, you know, maybe... Seeing Amari Cooper rebel, perhaps, against the, the organization for maybe trying to persuade him to go and get this, this vaccine, which is, is a hot topic, <laughs> polarizing discussion already, right? But maybe, maybe Amari showing face and being you know courtside and on the sideline of the national championship game without a mask on. I know that bothered some people. Uh, to me, just kind of, you know, it is what it is. Um, I personally don't have a problem with it. I'll go ahead and just say that. But, you know, a clearly clearly that was an issue and there became some sort of a wedge, divide a, a, a divide between 
Amari in the organization. So we'll see what happens with his current contract. There is an out built into it. The Cowboys can't get off that. I think he's due $22 million or $22 million against the cap uh, next year. Fish talked about that this morning, if you missed that. Uh, so we, we, we shall see what happens here in the offseason with Amari. I personally hope he comes back. I think he's vital and crucial to this team. But just wanted to go ahead and finish it out here. The last thing I have is, is from the sender as well. I'll clout chase after the season. Absolutely do not want to add any more dissent into that room because as it stands right now, things ain't good. And it starts and ends with the offensive philosophy from the Jones boys. And that is all a direct quote from this source. Uh, now you have a five-man line that can't block a four-man front. IDGAF, who your weapons are, they ain't working on that type B. And that was the end of it. So lots to lots to talk about there. We have entered, obviously, the offseason where it's it's lots of Kool-Aid. It's lots of reckless speculation at times. And that and, you know, if you want to go ahead and, and allocate that title to what I, we've just discussed here in this video, feel free to do so. Uh, I know I understand I'm just now getting to the point myself to where I'm over this loss and, and the, the disappointment that ensued after it and as a result of it. So, but again, that's why we're here. Lots of stuff to talk about and break down with these new coaching meetings. Uh, Fish also reported just a few minutes ago that Kellen Moore is, uh, or maybe, maybe I got the notification late. Uh, Kellen Moore has had his first meeting with the Broncos. That took place around two o'clock today from what I understand. And Dan Quinn will be having his meeting with the Denver Broncos shortly after that. So my personal feeling is, you know, I'll actually have, a, I'll, I'll, I'll tease that here. and I'll have another video coming out on my thoughts on the coaching situation as it pertains to the two coordinators presently on our, uh, on our roster, on our staff uh, for how long still remains to be seen. But this has been the Lando Show checking in with you guys, Fish Nation. Let me know what your thoughts are on this article. Once again, it's from Burgers and Blitzes at Not To Be Trite on Twitter. Y'all go check them out. Let me know what you think. And uh, I'll be looking forward to reading your replies in the, in the comment section below. See you guys.